Sure. Yeah, I uh, got here last night and um, had a really good practice today uh, over at the stadium. And um, you know, everybody here has been great. Uh, Gary and his staff have, have been excellent. Everything um, was really uh, well done. We got here and um, you know just got off the field a little while ago. Um, meetings and um, looking forward to a great week here. All right. Thanks, Coach. We'll go right into questions. We'll take our first question from Nathan Baird from Cleveland.com. Go ahead, Nathan. Hey, Ryan, I know that you um, wanted to be playing on conference championship weekend as Georgia was, but getting that week and, and focusing on Georgia that week, uh, any ways that you think that you're seeing that pay dividends in the weeks since then, the practices you've had either tactically or um, just in terms of uh, attitude, focus, that sort of thing? Well, I think um, you know the whole month has been a really good month for us. Um, as a team, um, really have got a lot of good work done. Um, I think, you know, it started off, and we always do this, when we're preparing for for a bowl game. We, we kind of break it up into fundamentals, game plan, and then the game week as we're here in Atlanta now. Um, but, but I think that there's been a focus on um, really high levels of execution. Um, I think that there's been a focus on just overall physicality at practice. And, um, you know, I think as we uh, finished our work in Columbus, you could see there was just an energy as we headed off, um, you know, down here to to Atlanta. And then that continued today. So, um, you know, we'll see as we get towards Saturday. But I can say that, um, you know, our guys have been working hard. The staff's been working hard. Um, there's there's a, a you know, level of urgency that we know we have to play our best football here in this game. And so we're going to continue to pair, prepare as hard as we possibly can, um, you know, on the field, off the field, and, and make sure we have a great week, week, uh, week here in Atlanta. All right. We'll take our next question from Bill Rabinowitz. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, Ryan, just kind of building up a couple of things there. Georgia is obviously a very physical team. I hope you can hear me okay. I'm in a car. I'm sorry. Um, Georgia is a very physical team. How important is it for you to match their physicality and as you said, you know, I don't know that Ohio State's played an entirely entire 60 minutes of, of top of their game football. Do you agree with that? And how important is it that that happened? Well, the good news is we have great experience uh, being uh, in this style of a game. You know, this is our, our third time playing in the CFP in the last four years. So um, but we have some really good examples to draw upon um, of what is going to transpire in this game. So we've been talking to our guys about how, first off, um, just how much excitement there's going to be at the stadium, the the atmosphere, the electricity, um, and how when you're in games like this, you know, every yard is, is a fight. Um, every first down, every point um, is going to be uh, that way. So uh, we've been preparing that way. We've been practicing that way. And we'll continue to do that throughout the week because we know uh, what a challenge we have here. But uh, when you get into the CFP, certainly uh, there's just a certain level that we have to uh, make sure we're preparing for. And um, I, I think um, our guys have been doing that and, you know, they're working hard and the leadership's going to have to play really well in this game. Our older guys, our veteran guys are going to have to lead the way because we know in big games like this, veterans have to play veterans. So um, certainly have a, a great challenge and a great opponent in, in Georgia. We know that um, they have a lot of great weapons. Um, certainly they play a uh, high level of football. They're defending national champs and certainly undefeated this year. So uh, we know what we're up against and uh, we're continuing to prepare for that. And, um, and certainly looking forward to this week as we head to Saturday. All right, we'll take our next question from uh, Tony Gerdman. Go ahead, Tony. Ryan, this is going to be one of those games where uh, Georgia has guys that you've recruited. Uh, you guys have uh, players that Georgia's recruited. What's it like as a head coach when somebody on the other side of the field that you've recruited is having a day against you? Well, it's a small world. Football is, is a um, small world. Um, you know, now even more than ever, you know, you end up recruiting guys and, and then you end up, um, you know, having uh, played against them or even have them come back in, in, you know, the transfer portal, you know, there's just, uh, there's only so many players out there and there's, there's only so many people typically that fit your profile too. And so, you know, it's, we run in small circles 
And well, we know a lot of the people who play at Georgia, we know their families, uh, but that's, that's similar to a lot of the teams we play. Um, and, you know, now with travel and the way that recruiting goes, you know, you, you're in touch with a lot of people, you recruit a lot of people and, and they've done an excellent job of recruiting and they have a lot of really good football players on that side of the ball or on, on um, in all three phases, um, you know, at Georgia and, and Kirby's done a good job of recruiting. So now uh, we know those, uh, those guys, we know how talented they are and, and obviously how well they're coached. So uh, we know the challenge ahead of us, but, uh, but to your question, you know, we're, we're kind of used to playing against guys that we know about and um, that we've recruited against. All right, we'll go next to Chip Towers from the AJC. Yeah, Ryan, I, I just if, if you would uh, go over the logistics just a little bit of uh, you guys deciding to get in on Christmas night. Uh, did you guys Christmas together, for lack of a better word? And um, and um, and then what's just wondering what your practice uh, regimen is like? Are you guys still hitting and stuff or is this install? What's the what's the week ahead look like you from a preparation standpoint with all this bowl stuff going on in between? Sure. Sure. Yeah, we um, yeah we did. We got in last night and um, had a little dinner for everybody last night, uh, which was great. And, and um, appreciate Gary and everybody at the Peach Bowl doing a, a great job for the families. And and um, you know, I have a lot of family and children here on the travel party. So um, you know, there was a Santa Claus here handing out gifts for the families, and so that was great. You know, it was a quick flight uh, down. So um, you know, for those who were on the charter. There's a good portion of our team that wasn't on the charter. They were flying in from different parts of the country um, as, as we gave them um, a couple of days off before we headed to the bowl site. So um, got here and then it's going to be a typical week. You know, went over there and practice today and then uh, we'll keep our routine, our routine. Um, you know, we're going to try to do the best we can to make, um, you know, the hotel here, our uh, our Woody Hayes Athletic Center and and make Mercedes-Benz our, our Woody Hayes practice facility, you know, and I think that's part of the process of being at the bowl site. So, um, try to keep things as normal as possible. Thank you. you All right. We'll go next to Spencer Holbrook. Go ahead, Spencer. Ryan, when you guys get to to the bull side and you start these practices, how how much different are they than than the days before Christmas? Or is it just like a normal week and how hard is it to keep a normal week when you've got all of the bowl activities that come with being in Atlanta for a week? Uh you know, that surround everything that goes on with the semifinal? Well, I think that's why you have to keep as many things routine as possible um, because it is a little bit different. There are some things that are not normal, like you said. Um, so how many things can we possibly just keep the routine so that when guys um, are here at the hotel or over at the at the stadium, um, you know, they can kind of visualize where things are and, and keep the routine, the routine, so they don't have to really process too much there and they can focus on getting on the field and uh, doing a great job in their preparation and practicing. But, um, you know, the, the Peach Bowl and the, the, everybody at Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl does a great job of, of setting up these events and organizing things so that the guys have things to do. But, you know, I think our guys are going to do a good job of staying focused on what really is important here, and that's playing the game at 8 o'clock on Saturday. All right, we'll go next to Joey Kaufman. Ryan, sorry if there's a bit of uh, crowd noise here. I just had a question about the the uniforms you guys are wearing, the, the playoff threads with the thicker uh, gray s stripes on the sleeves. You guys have worn them all the, all the playoff games since you've been the coach. Uh, what do you like about that look um, that's kind of been your predominant playoff look? Yeah, we, we try to, um, you know, uh, you know, honor the traditions and, and try to do the best we can in that area and make sure that we're, we're doing a great job and, um, you know, that, that's been something that we've done here, uh, in the past and, um, you know, our guys like it, we've got good feedback on that. So, um, we decided to do that again this year. All right. We'll go next to Charles Odom. Go ahead, Charles. There are a, a lot of brackets on, uh, the skill positions on Georgia's depth chart. And I'm wondering as you prepare for Georgia, um, uh, how does that, uh, affect the difficulty when they they're rotating so many running backs, receivers, tight ends, et cetera. Yeah, well, they've done a great job recruiting and have depth um, at so many positions, and so I know one of their um, was something they take a lot of pride in is playing uh, well, a lot of depth, um, you know, in, in in offense and defense. You know, I think, like you said, there's there's guys who roll in the in the the front, there's guys who roll in the back end. 
multiple running backs, multiple wide receivers. Um, so, uh, you know, that's when you're playing against a really good team who plays with a lot of depth and is recruited really well. That's that's one of the the things you have to uh, prepare for. Um, and what does that mean? Well, you just have to, you know, know that you're not going to just hone in on one or two guys. You got to uh, be aware of more than one of those guys. And, um, you know, that's a sign of a good team. All right, we'll go next to Bill Landis. Go ahead, Bill. Hey, Ryan. Uh, the, the last time we saw you guys in a playoff game against Clemson, you guys did a, a really good job of kind of using tempo to your advantage in, in that game. And, and I'm wondering if you think a similar approach in this game is necessary against Georgia's defense. And then also um, maybe broader, just how your philosophy on that has developed over the course of your career, whether you've, you've ever wanted to play super fast or if you've always been someone who tries to balance that. Yeah, um, you know, there's times like like you said that we we've done that before, uh, and it's it's been very good for us. You know, um, as we get closer to the game, we'll kind of figure out how that fits for us. But I think one of the things that um, you know, we have done over you know the past five six years is is have the ability to do that um, when need be, or if we think it gives us an advantage uh, for a, a myriad of reasons, then uh, we'll do it. Um, you know, I think it's uh, you know one of those things where nowadays. If if you're just no huddle going really, really fast every single game all the time, if that's all you do, teams can get immune to it. Um, but I think if you have the ability in, you know, switch it up from game to game or from series to series or play to play, then it's a little bit more of a weapon. And that's something that we've kind of um, probably done more here in the last few years than uh, early on. We used to play a lot faster, I think, as, as you remember, just a lot of snaps. But Teams have kind of adapted that a little bit more and they become no huddle defenses. So, you know, we try to stay ahead of that and, and use it as a tool, but not something that uh, we're doing all the time, every game. All right. We've just got time for about two to three more. We'll go next to Stephen Means. Go ahead, Stephen. Well, Ryan, I get on the recruiting trail. I know you guys kind of recruit all over the place, but when you were a marker, you know, kind of strategizing different areas you want to go into, is there an idea of, Maybe a number, or like what would make a, a trying to attack a certain area, what would make that worth it in the long run? Well, there's a lot that goes with it. I think first off, it's the uh, location in the proximity to uh, Columbus and Ohio. Um, I think that that matters a lot. Um, you know, certainly the, the, the number one focus is the, the state of Ohio. Uh, for for a lot of reasons, but uh, once you get outside of that, then then certainly there's a kind of a four to five to six hour radius that um, you know is is something that we take a look at. But then from there, for instance, like in the state of Georgia, uh, just you know a tremendous amount of talent, really well coached players, um, great programs. You know they they play football year round, and so you know they're they're graduating high school. You know in a position to really compete for spots coming out uh, of high school into college. And, uh, you know, so being down here is great this week. We certainly have recruited this area very hard and uh, know how competitive it is here, but they have great players and great coaches. So um, this is certainly an area that we, we focus hard, heavy into, uh, you know, in recruiting in the recruiting cycle. It's, um, you know, less than 10 hours of a drive and obviously an easy flight, you know, from Atlanta to Columbus. So uh, it's easy for folks to get, you know, to and from Atlanta to, to Columbus. And, uh, and certainly the amount of players here uh, speaks for itself. All right, we'll go next to Dan Hope. Hey, Ryan, this is, you know, second game in a row that you guys are going up against a team that's really good at running the ball. So when you look back at, you know, what happened against Michigan, what are the things you look at that you guys have to do better to be able to stop the run without, you know, giving up too much in a pass game? Yeah, Georgia does a great job. Um, you know, and I think they have a great mix. Um, you know, I think – when you look at um, you know what they do on offense, they're going to try to challenge you in a lot of different areas, and certainly it starts with with the run game, like you're saying. And so, so you know we've got to play with great fundamentals. Uh, we have to learn to um, you know how they're trying to attack us within the game, and uh, and then obviously you know get our guys into the best position possible schematically. But um, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to fundamentals and running to the football, playing really hard, pad level, uh, tackling. And, you know, certainly, like you said, you know, you, you can't uh, overcommit because then you, you put yourself at risk, risk in the back end. So, um, you know, we have to do a good job of, again, the coach's job is to make sure that we put our guys in a, the situation to be the most successful. And then it's our guys' job to play really, really hard. And, 
So we've take we've taken a hard look at certainly what happened in the last game, but also the challenge coming into this game, and uh, put a put a good plan together. We need to continue to have a really good week of practice, and and then we let the guys the, the guys go play. And um, you know, in this environment, they, they got to go play fast. And um, you know, having a couple extra weeks of preparation has helped their guys for sure. All right, we'll go next to Jordan Hill. Go ahead, Jordan. Ryan, you were asked about physicality earlier. What stands out to you when it comes to Georgia's defensive line and specifically with their physicality? I think when you look at their defensive line, first off, you see um, you see some really good players with really good size, um, but you also see multiple um, you know people that can play. You see you know really two, sometimes three deep, you know, at each of the positions inside, but. Um, I think they do a great job with their hands. I think they do a good job with their uh, pad level. Um, and, and, you know, they try to just, you know, eat up as many gaps as possible and, and try to, um, you know, try to create a mess inside. And they do a good job of that. So, um, you know, in half, you know, they've done that against a lot of great teams and a lot of great offenses. So uh, we know that we got to play our best game up front. We know what the challenge is and certainly some great players over there. So, um, you know, but that's that's what, you know, working towards this all year is all about. You know, you have to be playing your best football right here in the CFP, and, and certainly we're going to get challenged here on Saturday. All right, and we'll take our last question from Patrick Murphy. Go ahead, Patrick. All right, instead of Patrick, let's go to Andy Backstrom. Go ahead, Andy. Hey, Ryan. You know, players told us in mid-December there was a lot of good-on-good good practicing. At what point do you taper that off, and, and when do you know when, what time to taper that off? Yeah, we, we did a lot of that um, during the fundamental phase, kind of that first phase, and then we we mixed in um, that during the second phase. And then as we head into this week, we'll still have some good on good like we always do, but this is a typical game week practice for us. So uh, there'll be scout work. They'll still be good on good, and I think uh, mixing that in you know, keeps our guys, uh, keeps keeps their edge. Um, and so we'll, we'll mix that in this week. But – um, but, but as we head into the game week, this will be more of a typical week where, uh, leading up to this, we did a lot more good on good. All right. That'll do it for you, coach. Thanks very much. We appreciate your time.